and welcome to my channel Bevy with Beth. I'm Beth and here on this channel I talk all about polycystic ovarian syndrome, the symptoms, how to cope with them and how my personal journey with PCOS is going. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to catch my videos every single week and today we're going to continue talking about weight loss. Before we start, a quick disclaimer that I will be talking about numbers in this video. I'll be talking about my calorie intake as well as my actual physical weight and any weight loss or weight gain that I have seen this week. So if any of that would be uh, difficult for you to watch because of your past or current eating disordered behavior, then I completely understand and of course feel free to skip this video. Again, I have content on my channel all about how to eat healthy with PCOS, some things to add into your diet to help with PCOS that doesn't talk about restriction or diet or any kind of numbers at all. So feel free to check those videos out instead and miss this one. If on the other hand you're comfortable talking about numbers and have an interest in my PCOS weight loss journey then continue to watch. In this video there's going to be another five tips that I used in the past that I'm currently following again now to help me to lose weight despite the fact that I have uh, insulin resistance and PCOS. This is actually the second video in this series so if you haven't seen the first video yet then go back and check that one out um, after this one. It doesn't matter really what order you watch them in but that will show you my initial weight and talk about the goals that I have for weight loss. So we're going to talk about the five tips that I have for you this week first and then we'll talk about any weight loss or weight gain that I've experienced this week and talk a little bit about any of the struggles and things that I've had. So let's start with the five tips for this week. I know now that I have talked extensively about gut health on uh, on my channel but that's mainly because it is just so important that because the gut microbiome is responsible for so many other functions within our body especially when it comes to our mental health that if we don't have an understanding of how to improve our gut health if we've got bad gut health how to maintain it if it's still good then it's just going to put our health progress on hold, especially when it comes to what we're eating. If we don't incorporate some gut healthy things, if we don't have our gut microbiome in mind as we're eating, then it just isn't going to be as successful. And I certainly found, again, another shift for me was when I learned about the gut microbiome, when I started looking at what are pro and prebiotics, how to get them into my diet naturally, started adding some things in um, I took a supplement for a while, tried very hard to make my own sauerkraut recipe, which has never been successful. Finally found one in Sainsbury's that I can now eat on a regular basis. And again, that just makes everything else so much easier when we start with gut health and kind of build from there. So I know I spoke about protein in one of the breakfast tips. But I wanted to talk today a bit more about balancing macros. And one of the things that um, I found really helpful when learning to know what to eat, not just with my meals, but also with any snacks that I was having and kind of understanding what my body was telling me that it needed. I watch a YouTuber, registered dietitian here on YouTube called Abby Sharp. I have mentioned her before. But she has this thing called the hunger crushing combo and basically this is where you have a meal or a snack that is balanced in its macronutrients so as much as protein is obviously really important for uh, satiating and also for functions in the body and Fat is obviously the one we're, that I focus on the most because I'm trying to do keto, so I do naturally have lower carbs in order to battle my insulin resistance. 
if I am gonna have something that's got some carbs in it, it's really great to make sure that that's paired with either protein or fat, or if you're having a full meal, to have kind of a balance of all of them, which means my body is getting everything that it needs in one portion. So not obviously, not everything it needs, but um, for satisfaction, it has everything in one portion. And I definitely found that a game changer, as I said, especially when reducing carbs, that you have that natural um, desire for carbs, that kind of carb addiction, which we'll talk about another time. But if you can then make sure that everything else that you're eating is satisfying by having a balance of macros, then it definitely sets you up. So I will leave some videos linked down below of Abby Sharps, where she talks about the hunger crushing combo and how to get the best out of your meals and snacks. Another thing that I learned along the way, which really helped to combat some of the hardest sides of dieting, um, especially when it comes to reducing carbs, because they can be, you, you've got that element of withdrawal from carbs anyway. We're looking at, you know, like balancing your macros and making sure you're eating enough calories and all that kind of thing. Another element that really plays into it, which is important for when you're balancing your hormones, is that as we go through our cycle, our body needs diff and wants different things from the food that we're eating. Because I was on a, a contraceptive pill that was replacing my progesterone, which meant I didn't have a cycle. I didn't have the ups and downs quite the same. So I didn't have those extreme differences in week to week. And then when I came off the pill, I definitely noticed that what I wanted to eat would vary. The Chinese medicine aspect of our cycle and how as we go through each phase, our body requires different food and then wants different foods. And so they relate our menstrual cycle to the seasons of the year. And so if you think about the different foods that we like to eat, Year, especially if you live somewhere like I do here in the UK where we have all four seasons throughout the year then you know what I want to eat in the depth of winter and what I'd like to eat at the height of summer are very very different things and so I've been trying to put into practice having a view of my menstrual cycle so which week I'm in in my cycle relating to what I'd like to eat during that season of the year and then also looking at what season of the year I'm in and how I can make those two things kind of correlate. So for example, in the depth of winter, you want to have a very nice, hearty, warm, fatty, healthy, fatty foods, maybe a really nice beef stew. But if I'm in my winter, so I'm on my period, I might want something that's warming and hearty, but also it's the height of summer, or like right now, it's spring. So I don't want to make a really nice hearty beef stew because that wouldn't, it would overheat me and it wouldn't feel comforting, it would feel overwhelming. But doing something instead like a nice light chicken or vegetable soup or stew and having that so it is warmer, but it's not heavy because I don't need that kind of comfort during the physical spring whilst I'm in my hormonal winter. But it's definitely played a role in helping me to know what to eat and when to eat it, to support my body to the best of my ability whilst also trying to be on a weight loss journey. We had some really good weather on Thursday afternoon which meant I got to eat outside, giving me the perfect time to talk about uh, this next tip, which is about mindful eating. Actually taking the time to register what it is that you're eating, put aside all other distractions, and just let yourself be with the food. This can really help to make us feel a lot more satisfied with whatever it is we're eating.
So my last tip for this week is actually about binge eating. And I have spoken before about binge eating on my channel, but I haven't really touched on it since because I'm still trying to work out that I found my carb addiction was leading me to binge eating and that when I went on to keto that kind of stopped but when I kind of come off keto or get into carb eating and then come back off and get back into ketosis that those kind of like binge eating habits pop up again and I think the the problem is, is that when I the last couple of times where I've been in carb eating mode and I've gone back into ketosis it's normally been driven by weight loss. And I think it's really difficult to not have the calories in, calories out mentality around what you're eating and not look at portion sizes and think they're too big or have, like I spoke last week about having just three meals and even when you're hungry, they're not having something else to eat because it's outside of the three meals and you shouldn't be snacking, you shouldn't need to snack. And that then you're not eating enough calories so your body is not only starved from carbs but also just starved of calories and just is actually hungry. <laughs> and then it's like a double whammy and it becomes very intense. It's very difficult then to eat something in moderation or what I find tends to happen is it will be like a day. So I'll eat really well for say three days and then I'll get to Thursday or Friday. It's the end of the week, I'm a bit more tired. And even though I meal prep to have food ready so that the decision fatigue of, oh, what am I gonna have for dinner now? Oh, this all I'm craving is some pizza or pasta maybe. and but and then you don't have any dinner prepared and it's even harder to make something that doesn't have the thing that you're also really crave. I may have eaten well, but I haven't eaten enough, enough calories. So I try to add things into the main meals to bulk those up rather than having snacks. But the the goal is in these weeks to make sure that I am eating enough calorie wise when I was originally losing weight that if I allowed myself to eat when I needed to when I got that extreme hunger that to eat enough even if it wasn't good food you know even if it was off plan that it was much easier to then come back the next day and start looking at oh, okay what can I add to keep myself full what snack could I have if I'm actually hungry after work before dinner how can I incorporate keto based or healthy options rather than leaving myself hungry and ending up in a binge where all you want is chocolate bread and white bread and pasta so having followed those tips myself and obviously the ones from last week as well over the last week been keeping my diet, like I said, to 1800 calories. That's what I've been kind of checking in, not regularly checking every single day, but regularly checking in and making sure that I am eating enough each day. So I've definitely had success this week with eating those three regular meals during the week, having a later breakfast on Saturday and just the one meal in the evening. I did then weigh myself again I think it was Sunday morning that I weighed myself and I forgot to record me weighing myself which is really annoying um so I don't have any footage of me stepping on the scales for this week but I did I am now at 91 so I lost a lost a kilogram in that week which is um nothing that could be, might have just mean that I did a really big poo <laughs> that's like that's that's a nothing number um yeah it, re it really doesn't make any difference one way or another so I'm interested to see what I weigh at the end of this week because I think that will give me an indication as to whether we're seeing progress in one direction or not 
if I've lost another kilogram this week, then to me that means I am steadily losing weight. Um, but if I either have put on weight or I'm at the same, then yeah, that one kilogram was, I just weighed myself at an optimal time and I was just a kilogram lighter. So I'm really interested to see where it goes so that we can get an idea of progress or not progress. But since I made progress, I feel that the week went really well. I'm happy with what I ate. I felt nourished and I didn't feel hungry all the time. It feels sustainable. There's indications I might be making progress on my weight loss. And so I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. So tell me, now that you've seen all of these 10 tips, is there anything here that you haven't tried before? Is there something you wanna get back to or start doing that you found successful in the past? Let me know in the comments down below because it would be great to get some um, hints and tips from other places as well, things that people have found successful. So let me know in the comments below. Obviously give the video a like if you've learned anything from it and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. So my last tip for this week is, um, I've actually forgotten. <laughs> oh God damn it. I've actually forgotten. I've actually forgotten. Um, we, we can't really... Mm.